chapter 5, verse 43 through 48. Listen now to the word of God as it is proclaimed by God's servant, the evangelist Matthew. You have heard that it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For you, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same, and if you greet only your brothers and your sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. For those of you who don't know, I didn't grow up in the United Methodist Church. My mom grew up Lutheran and my dad grew up Presbyterian, and given that we moved around a lot because of my dad's job as a geologist, uh, we worshipped with a variety of different denominations. I like to think of myself as more of a denominational mutt, if you will. It wasn't until 1996 when my family moved to Plano, that we first started worshiping at a United Methodist Church. My parents were drawn to that church because of its focus on mission. Its energy and passion was directed at making the world a better place. Now at the time, I didn't know much of anything about the United Methodist Church or who John Wesley was, or what his rules were. But looking back, it's no surprise to me that my parents were drawn to that Methodist church. After all, Wesley's second simple rule is do good. When we moved away, we continued to find churches that we felt at home in, some United Methodist and some not. But when it came time for me to decide what church I would belong to, I chose the United Methodist Church. Not because it was what I grew up with, but because I was drawn to what the United Methodist Church has to say about God and life. I joined the United Methodist Church because I believe in a God of perfect love. I joined because I believe that you don't have to check your brain at the door in order to be present at worship. And because I felt at home in a place surrounded by people who are trying their best to live with open hearts and open minds and open doors. And perhaps most of all, I was drawn to the United Methodist Church because of our shared commitment to John Wesley's second rule, do good. Wesley said that people who are authentically seeking to live after the example of Christ should be merciful and do as much good as they possibly could to all people at every opportunity. There's a, a saying that is often misquoted as Wesley uh, that sums it up like this. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can at all the times you can, to all the people you can, 
as long as ever you can. Now, doing good seems like a pretty common sense rule and a relatively simple one to follow. But the more I think of it, the more I am convinced that this simple rule is much deeper and expansive than it might first appear. What does it mean to do good? Where do we even begin? Who is it we do good to, or for, or with? Why do we choose to not do good? And when have we let our actions been guided by fear instead of the desire to do good? Are we willing to let go of control, to be vulnerable, and to face rejection in order to do good? And when we reflect on the simple rule, we have to ask ourselves, who have we not treated as a child of God? world that seems so full of hurt and fear. Doing good to others, especially those who don't do good to us, can seem impossible. It's a good thing we have Jesus who teaches us how to do good. Now let me be clear, Jesus' understanding of doing good wasn't idealistic or wishful thinking. He didn't pretend as though it was easy. Because Jesus didn't talk about doing good in an abstract and theoretical way. Or even a sentimental and soft kind of way. In his Sermon on the Mount, he told the crowds, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Yes, Jesus. But I say to you, you shall love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. The love that Jesus is talking about in this passage is more than a feeling for all you Boston fans out there. Thank you for those of you who laughed. I appreciate that. No, this love that Jesus is talking about is the perfect love of God that, that God has for all the world. Jesus is talking about the kind of love that he trusted in throughout his ministry. It's the kind of love that gives itself for others. The kind of love that humbly serves. The kind of love that goes to a cross. The kind of love that cannot be contained by death. The kind of love that will remain when all else passes away. This is the love of God. That Jesus talks about, the love that we are to have, not just for our neighbors, not just for those who love us in return.
Jesus was talking about the perfect love of God that's more inclusive and expansive than we can begin to imagine or comprehend. God's love knows no limits. No one is exempt or excluded. After all, God makes the sun rise on the evil and the good, and rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. Even here in Clay County, This love of God is what leads us to do good, not just for those who love us back, but our enemies and those who persecute us. This love of God removes the distinction between them and us because we are all God's children. To follow God is to love as God loves. It is to do good to everyone, not just those we think deserve it. That's what it means to do good as the children of God. It means that we live a life so immersed in the love of God that we cannot help but do good. As children of God, we do good consistently, without Partiality, without prejudice, without bias. And as United Methodists, we are committed to loving our enemies and everyone else by following the ideals of John Wesley and his simple rule. Do good. So we do good. Not for our own benefit, but because as children of God, that is how we are to live according to the love of God that is always at work in our lives. And when we can't directly do good in a person's life, we pray for them. That they might experience the same blessings of peace, joy, health, and hope that we would wish for ourselves. That we pray for, for ourselves. The truth is, the gift of good we offer might be rejected. It might be ridiculed and misused. We might seek to do good by standing up for others, like victims of abuse or children who are separated from their families. And we might be told to be quiet. Or we might stand up in the face of racism, prejudice, and hate. We might be told to sit back down. But our desire to do good is not limited by the thoughts and actions of others. Our desire to do good is our response to Jesus' invitation to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Because doing good goes beyond superficially treating people nicely or just being polite. It means that we choose a way of life that nourishes community and trust. As United Methodists, we seek to heal the wounds of our sisters and brothers, regardless of their social position, their politics, their economic situation, their sexual orientation, their race, or their religion. As United Methodists, we are committed to doing good no matter what. Doing good is more than supporting and lifting up the people who agree with us and act like us. 
It means we live out our belief that the goodness and grace and love of God is greater than any human limitation. As United Methodists, we transform our words and our actions and our Facebook posts from words that wound and harm into words and acts that heal and build up. Doing good goes deeper than the occasional random act of kindness. It means that we are affirming with our lives, with every part of who we are, that the love of God is greater than the petty hate and smallness that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. As United Methodists, when we are committed to doing good, we will resist the fear that seeks to divide and conquer by standing united with truth and kindness. Doing good means treating ourselves and others as who we all are, the beloved children of God. Together, we will work for the common good first of all. our good second. As followers of Christ, we believe that what guides our lives is not fear, but the perfect love of God, the love of God that overcomes evil with good. This means that we can confront hate and falsehood by doing good in a proactive way of life. We don't have to wait and see how other people will treat us before we do good. We can choose to act with kindness, even if it means giving up control of the outcome. We can stand up for the weak and vulnerable by becoming vulnerable ourselves. And above all, Doing good means that we place our trust in the love of God first and foremost in our lives. It means trusting in the God who brings us multiple days of rain in one week. I didn't think that happened here. It means trusting in the God of life who gives life to all, not just us, but our enemies, and those who persecute us as well. And in that perfect love of God that we trust in and depend upon, we find strength. We find the strength to do all the good we can, by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places we can, at all the times we can, to all the people we can, as long as ever we can. 